とブルースさんはあの、えー、とブルース・リーンにちなんで名前を付けられたという。That's a good first question, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, not really, because, but、uh, I mean, few reasons. Because Bruce is like, I don't know any Bruce in the pianist industry, so it's kind of nice, you know, unique. And otherwise,、uh, since when I was 14, 15, some people said I look like Bruce Lee, and I said, why not? So that I can just, yeah, it was many, it was some fun factors, yeah. You mean me? Yes. <laughs> oh, I don't know.、Um, I think it's just very important to, to, to walk on your own path. You know, it's,、um, it's important to know what your nature is.、Um, and, you know, to, of course, know your weakness, know your quality. And I think the best thing about, about this is that you try to, in the music world, you have the freedom. To really develop your, your artistry, you develop the thing that you want to develop, basically.、Um, for example, I, there are certain things I, that of my quality I want to show more.、Uh, so, in this way, somehow I hide my weaknesses. And I think that's basically the way that you have your own personality. Because if everything is too well measured、uh, to, to whatever, to the society or to the Structure or to the everything, I think then it's,、um, I don't know, then it's,、um, I think it's not so interesting anymore. I think it's just in this music world is important, maybe for him as well. You know, in this,、um, I think it's the same for sports, for all these,、um, uh, if you want to say high demanding but、uh, a little bit specialized、um, industry, it's, I think it's important to have, I mean, to have your sharp points. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, as I said, it's, it's really like a black and white.、Um, because at, before the competition, it was not,、uh, it didn't start my career at all. I was like quite a normal student. And of course, after the competition, I have to、uh, think about many, many new aspects. You know, of course, music is still the core, but you have to think about all the business and the management,、uh, how to organize your life, how to organize your practice, how to organize your. Schedule has become、uh, new things because you have to think everything like two, three years ahead, as I said. And、um, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, a lot of new challenges,、um, but it's,、um, it's nice. Yeah,、I'm, I remember I was quite nervous、um, for the first few months, I think. But then I think it's just to really know your rhythm, your new rhythm, and then it's,、uh, it's okay for me. Yeah. A year ago, when he had the pleasure of interviewing you, you said that you hoped that everyone would forget that you were the winner of the Chopin competition. Let's see. <laughs> yes, it's, it's still there. <laughs> <laughs>、um, well, no, I think this, this is a very natural process, you know.、Um, of course, it's a, it's a huge honor to keep this title.、Um, I don't know, it's. One year is quite, I feel like it's still like yesterday, you know, it s it passed so quickly. And、uh, I cannot believe I played E minor for like 30 times already. So it, the time passed very quickly.、Um, this was rather a joke, you know, but、uh, I think it's really to. At the time I said that because I had this very strong desire to really. Because already we have been, I have been playing, playing Chopin you know, before the competition. To prepare the competition was like for two years.、Uh, so I had this very strong desire to, you know, to start doing something new, which I did. Like, you know, I did some, some Tchaikovsky, some Rachmaninoff. So it's,、um, I think, just to enjoy the variety of things, it's nice. Yeah, yeah because it was, the main purpose was for、um, my next album, the French album, so which is going to be Rameau, Ravel. Uh, and Alcon. So,、uh, the, the general idea was to do something French but not too French. Like,、uh, in a sense, that Rameau is, of course, it's.、Um, because when we talk about Baroque music, everybody just t a l k about Bach and Scarlatti, you know. And,、uh, but actually, the French Baroque was a, big, was a big part, you know, Rameau and Couperin and Charpentier, I mean, all these people.、Uh, And Rameau for me is very special because it's, it's, it's I think, one of the highest virtuosity 
composer of the Baroque period. I think nobody has that technique at that time. Maybe that's why it's not so much played, but um, yeah, and of course then it developed in the Romanticism and, and the Ravel um, that I played in the album is like uh, Miroir and there's it's very, Alborada is very Spanish and Rameau somehow is, is French, but there's also a very primitive side like uh, the Turkish, you know, the, in the uh, and Galant opera, and uh, and Alcan is just not, it's just not French. It sounds like Liszt, you know. So I mean, all these kind of um, French composer, but uh, in a way very uh, not very French it gives a very interesting illusion. But if you wanna get back to Ramon, it's just I think he was, I mean, he was the like the father of theory of uh, harmony, you know. And um, basically, everybody these at the time took inspiration from him, and with Couperin, of so of course, is uh, he wrote a book on piano technique in at the time for harpsichord. So all these people are, are like you know the the, the it's like one of the first um, people like for you know for pianism and technique and everything. So I think it's great to uh, to come back to something that we forgot, and then. Plus the pieces are just extremely beautiful, of course. And uh, for example, if you play the Sauvage in Europe, I think everybody knows the theme basically, but maybe they don't really know it was from Rameau. So now it gives good, uh, good hint. For Chopin, I actually never thought I would choose Fazioli because I never played it on it. So it's a, uh, it's a very, um, I mean, it was a good choice for me, of course, especially for my style and for and for the acoustic of the hall at that time and for maybe my feeling, you know, everything changes. Um, yeah, but it's, um, it depends, I think, just on each piano and each acoustic in general, yeah. But that uh, I remember the competition that uh, how I like it, it's because it's it's a little bit like, um, like Aelian, you know, like a, like a forty piano kind of piano, you know. We know it was so light uh, the sound is very, uh, is like very vintage. I don't know. It's just very close to, it's just very close to this salon style that I have in mind of Chopin, and uh, and the upper part is extremely bright, so it's um, very good, for, you know, to transport the sound to the hall. I think for the modern hall, you know, because for the piano is used to play in salon, but we need uh, such a big sound for such a big hall as the Warsaw Philharmonic so um, yeah but you know all, all that was made in 15 minutes uh, choosing all these pianos it's, it's like it's really speed dating and um, yeah and um, I, I would say just basically every every concert uh, is like a speed a speed dating we have to get used we have to know this uh, piano you know have to, it's like you know you know the person you have to communicate together and to, you know, uh, make something together up, yeah, but, uh, but that's the, also the nice part of being a pianist, you know, we have uh, many choices, yeah. あの、その、ショパンコンクールの、あの、セミファイナルで弾かれた、え、ラチダレの演奏曲、え、ええ、いいです。うん。あの、ショパンコンクールの時になんかこう、雲の上にいるような<笑><笑> あの、楽しく演奏できたっていう風におっしゃってたと思うんですけれども、1年経ってこう曲に対するイメージとか自分なりの弾き方みたいなものって変わってきましたでしょうか。Yeah, still. I mean, especially to put uh, as I said to put uh, this with the list, Don Giovanni, you know, it's, it's just very nice to compare these two together. It's been a dream for me to put these two Don Giovanni together for a long time to compare the elegance and the humoristic side in the Chopin um, about this and the list much more erotic, you know, sexual and uh, dramatic uh, contrast in the, in the list version, which is of course the list one is closer to the Mozart opera itself because it's a transcription and the Chopin is rather a variation. He just took one theme and just developed in his own style. So, I mean, it's, um, it's very nice and Funny thing is that in uh, I played somewhere in uh, I forgot where in Europe. Then in the first half, just like this program, in the second half, the list. And I say this uh, when I started the list, he said, 
didn't we hear this piece already? <laughs> so it's, you know, it's always nice to fool the public and, uh, yeah, and to give some fun. Both pieces are very in the improvisation style and um, very flamboyant and very, you know, um, yeah, brilliant uh, stuff. So I think it's just easy for the public to listen. And so, yeah. No, I actually started everything at 8. So, so have you learned the electric piano? I started electric piano at eight. <laughs> I think it's just like I didn't really, maybe it's because of my parents or whatever, we didn't put me in a, in a situation to compare with any, any people. So I, so, we, so I didn't feel anything that I was late. And I remember maybe there was kids that were even later. So maybe I felt that I was even good, you know? <laughs> it's it's I think it's all about uh, it's it's all about what you want you know if you want it to be very competitive or if you want to be just um, uh, because I, as I said it was one of the many hobbies I had so it was there was no pressure at all it was just um, something to to do in the weekend you know and started doing comp some little small competitions maybe a few years a uh, few years later. Uh, but again, I think I think in in my city or something, maybe the environment is all like that. You know, they didn't have this kind of uh, scores or anything. And even I remember this difference because I, I was I, I learned in Canada, of course. And when I went back to China for a summer vacation to see my grandparents, and people started asking me, since I play the piano, everybody asking me, uh, what uh, level are you? Because they have this RCM. Um, examination level yeah like what, I don't know, one to ten and I didn't know what's that so I just say like I, I don't have any level <laughs> and then, and then this, I remember these people just get very confused because I think in China or whatever maybe in here also they have to you know they start in a very structural way so um, yeah I mean I guess that's the but I think yeah, it was just I would say that it was just I didn't consume my interest or passion too quickly maybe that's the reason it could have lasted longer as well oh yeah uh, a few times yeah i think everybody has that um i remember once i had maybe when i was 15 i got such bad review and when i was 15 i made like a debut with big orchestra and it was such a bad review and um and uh, I think I, w I asked my teacher and everything, and of course they don't really understand. But now that, uh, now of course I know that review, you know, it's uh, accepting everything, and you know somebody is also due to political reasons or anything, you know. But at the time it was such a big, uh, like a uh, big shock for me, and because I worked really hard on that um, concerto and everything, and I think it was, uh, and I just won like the competition. It was like a gala or something. For now, now for me everything is like, is like entertainment. You know, it's it's like fun. It's just it's nice to see, and I think people need this kind of fun. I think um, nothing is you no know, too serious. You know, it's um, it's just yeah. So that was one time I almost um, uh, quit piano. I think I was so like sad. You know, no, but you know, competition is also. A factor that can really ruin your <laughs> your uh, pleasure of playing but uh, I think a few times of course it was it was like that um, but uh, I was just on always analyzing after the competition the process not just the playing but I think I enjoy the experience the whole experience you know, of making new friends and um, basically having a new perspective of, of your of your music making and then, because we always have trouble to getting out of this comfort zone, you know, we want to stay in, the, in always in the good words, in the encouragement, you know, and people say, ah, you play so well, it's great. Um, so I think these things are are just something to you know to to make you as a stronger person, and and I think once you have passed this, it's uh, it's it's just enjoyment, and you know you know how to deal with these things now. Yeah. Um, oh, my technique is not perfect. <laughs> um, no, I think it's um, 
it's not contradictory you know i think the fact to 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 actually even to have this freshness is actually requiring an even higher uh, even a hi- even a higher control i think because normally we we say that um um that if it's if it has a good technique that means you lose something because that means you're fully in control that means there's something that is not i feel is not um free enough you know i think uh of course it's it's a nice compliment but when when people come here and say f- the first thing they tell you is that you have good technique i feel it's a little bit of a of a bad of a bad comment you know it's <laughs> that means like i only have good technique or something that you mean you didn't get touched by music or you know it's um um yeah but i think it's important to practice i think for me just uh uh with even i practice techniques slowly or something i always put the the music inside so i i never really practice technique like technique technique um yeah because that's the way how to make the the music natural it's hard to separate these two things i think because uh once schumann did that you know which schumann was in his uh that's how he basically ruined his pianist career because he was practicing on a machine like you know this kind of machine and they put the fingers up like like this and he just uh, broke his fingers yeah of course that's a bad example but it's just that um, all these people have tried already to separate uh, but I think if you practice technique separately and then you come to music it doesn't connect the bridges very well you know so it's always important to to combine these two things together even when you're practicing separately yeah